Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On and this is another edition of A View From The Other Side, this time for the Manchester United at home six-pointer. I mean, they usually use six-pointers in terms of relegation scraps, but for me, both Spurs and Manchester United desperately need to win this game, so I'm happy to call it a six-pointer. So today we're going to talk to Stephen Housen from Full Time Devils. How are you, Stephen? I'm good, my mate. How are you? Very well. Good to talk to you. So... Let's get it started. How do you really feel and how do the other Man United fans feel that this season has gone? Has it been a bit, obviously it's been a bit up and down, lots of rumours about Van Hull keeping his job or not, but what's the overall impression? I don't know if I'd call it up and down, it's been mostly down I think, um, although we still find ourselves in quite a competitive position. It's been weird. Um, December really has, has taken the confidence that Manchester United fans had that we would go into games with. There was an area of expectancy at home games and then we always thought, Going to certain grounds would always be tough, but we would always sort of expect that we'd come out of there with a win or we'd get a point and we'd probably be disappointed with a point most of the time as well. And and at the moment, we're going into games and going, I have no idea what we're going to get. And, right. and I think that's how we're going into the remainder of the season thinking it's in our hands, I think, to get to get fourth place. Yeah. But we don't we don't know if we will or not. Yeah, it seems to me like, uh, like you said, obviously a bad Christmas time, bad December. But over the last three or four games, you've, you've seemed to pick up wins, but without uh, it seemingly exciting your fans. Like certainly winning the derby never seemed to be so, from, just from what I saw, uh, so kind of not, you, you guys not so bothered about it. I mean, obviously you must have been delighted, but was it all too far gone by then? I was pretty chuffed about winning the derby. Um, I think it, it, was, uh, it was still a big win, I think, uh, Especially as Manchester City was going to walk the league at the start of the season, if you remember back yeah. that they, they they started off like a rocket, and um, the way they faded uh, has been impressive for me. And I think that's why I think we'll we'll end up finishing above them. But we we've been picking up wins and grinding out wins. I think you could say w- would be fair. But it's, it has been a bit more exciting, especially since the emergence of Rashford. Rashford is an exciting player, yeah. and that has probably been the only excitement that we've been getting this season. I think. All right, so going into the uh, Spurs game, White Hart Lane on Sunday, uh, what you know, obviously a huge game for you. But what what have you guys, uh, as Manchester United fans, and you yourself made of Spurs this season so far? What, I've always thought of, uh, well, my stepdad was a big Man United fan. He always called Spurs the Man United of the South. That's why he <laughs> insisted on buying me a Spurs shirt, as well as for the fact that he hated Arsenal so much. But uh, I've, I've always felt there's been a bit of a, you know, Spurs and Man United have never hated each other. They both try and play football the right way. So what have Man United fans made of Spurs this season? I think Spurs are a great club. Um, I do enjoy watching them play for the most part. Um, even back to the early 90s when I first started watching football and you had the likes of Klinsman and stuff. They've always been uh, a, a team that has, like you said, played football the right way or at least tried to. This season, it's been incredible for them. But I, I'm not sure it's a shock, to be honest, because if you look through your squad and your starting eleven, you've got good players. And I think when you signed Lloris, was it three seasons ago you signed yeah. Lloris? Yeah, three or four I thought seasons, that yeah. was a bit of a statement intent. And I think you've been planning for this sort of thing since then. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think it's an accident that you've ended up here. I think the sale of Gareth Bale when you end up spending 100 million on probably quite average players. But there's been a couple in that that have come out and done all right for you since, haven't they? And you go through your squad and, and it's extremely strong and it's got a very English core as well, which is always good to see. Yeah, I think a lot of Spurs fans would say... Um, the key to this, you know, I think you're absolutely right. There's been a growth and a plan in, in place. And, and maybe sometimes even Daniel Levy, who gets a lot, of, you know, a lot of abuse, doesn't get enough credit for the fact that he has made decisions to try and make this happen. But I think the real key moment was definitely last summer when you know, we bit the bullet and said, you know, your Paulinho's and et cetera were not good enough. So we've got to get them out the door. Adebayor, another one uh, as well. So that's kind of, kind of what happened. Is there a feeling at, at United that you might need a clear out of, of similar sorts? Or is, the, you know, of, I'm not talking about the youth players who are coming through because I like Rashford a lot as well. I love the left back as well. He's one of the most terrific crosses of a ball I've seen uh, for a while. Uh, but it, some of the older players, is there a feeling there that you might have to get rid of some of them? I think we've had the clear out. I think that's possibly one of Van Gaal's chores that he's had to do since being manager. And I think that's one of the difficulties that he's faced. He's trying to remain competitive while we've we've gone through the clear out. You think of the players that we've lost mm. since our last league title win. Obviously, Giggs and Skulls retired. Rio Ferdinand was moved on. Vidic and Evra was moved on at the end of the Moyes season. We've lost Kagawa, Van Persie, Welbeck. You've got players there that would arguably start ahead of what we've got in the squad at the moment. And I think all bar... You know, Phil Jones, uh, Smalling, De Gay, Rooney and Carrick, that's an entirely new squad that we're looking at. So I think I think Van Gaal has had a, a period of 
um, debt clearing, if you like. And I think we are in a very good position. Now, if you look at the bases of most of the squad at the moment, Daley Blinn's very young, Schneidlin's quite young, apart from Schweinsteiger and perhaps Rooney and Carrick. Mm. It's a very young squad. De Gea's young. You've got Shaw, Damian, all the forwards from Memphis and Marshall. Uh, they're all extremely young. So I, I think we might be in the same sort of position as you guys are. Sure. Maybe just a couple of years behind you at the moment. Um, and is, is Van Hal not given enough credit for that then? Because, you know, obviously, I guess just the size of the club and the traditions and history and, and trophy winning you've had, you need to be winning trophies all the time. But that's a hell of a job that he's had to do. And, and maybe he's not given enough credit for that. Maybe. maybe. Um, but I think that you've still got to maintain that on the pitch, which might be slightly unrealistic from our point of view, that we expect to still be competing and still be challenging for titles when we are going through an undoubted transitional period post Sir Alex Ferguson. Maybe he does need a little bit more credit for that, but as fans, we only want to see us competing and challenging for the title, and we've not done that this season. I think if we do finish in the top four and manage to lift the FA Cup this season, it's going to feel like an achievement after where we've been, but that's not where we're looking for year on year, is it? We don't want to become like Arsenal. No, of course not. Nobody wants that. Um, so, uh, uh, thinking about Spurs a bit more, which which players, you said you thought we've got a, a great squad of, of talent, which kind of players have really impressed you? And also, there have been rumours about some of them potentially being uh, being bid for by Manchester United. So, talk to me a bit about those. I think there's always going to be rumours linking Spurs players to Manchester United because it's a path that's kind of well-worn, isn't it? That yeah. players do leave Spurs to go to Manchester United. Not for um, a while, though, Stephen. Not for a while. This, well, since Daniel Levy's decided to absolutely go bananas on the uh, on the old prices, I think, yeah. We, I mean, he's probably the best negotiator in the game, isn't he? He's probably worth how much a season for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Dembele's been great. Um, a real engine in midfield. Can't not talk about Harry Kane. Who we did think he was potentially a flash in the pan last season, but this season, I think he's got the highest shots to um, highest shots on target ratio. He's got he's got phenomenal finishing. He's an intelligent footballer. Christian Eriksen, another intelligent footballer. And then you have got the, the English lads like Trippier and um, Ali and Rose and, and Dyer. And I think you've got a great core surrounded by a couple of players that are a little bit special. Um, you, you're you probably going to be sticking around, I would have thought, in the top two or three for a, a long time, I think, unless something major goes wrong. That's very good of you to say. Uh, just you, you touched on Dembele there. Obviously, um, a few years ago when um, uh, Dembele came to us, he was interesting Man United at the time, and I have a lot of Man United fan friends who are annoyed that they didn't stump up the £15 million to buy him. Is he a player you think could have could have been a great signing for you if, you, if you'd gone out on a limb there? I think if we signed him today, he would have been a great signing for us. I think we miss a little bit of physicality. The physicality that we've got is is um, is Fellaini, mm. and he's he's not a footballer. Dembele's both. He's physical, but he also can play the game. So he would have been a great signing for us. It is an absolute coup for you guys, and I think he's an integral part of your side this season. Yeah, he definitely is. Absolutely right. Um, other rumours that have been going around that uh, Manchester United b- might be interested in uh, getting Pochettino in as their next manager, and I did see that interview with Sir Alex Ferguson, where he just started out of the blue saying, uh, oh, lots of big clubs will be interested in him. Is that a bit of uh, gamesmanship there? Is that a, a real possibility, do you think? Sir Alex Ferguson's been leaking stuff to the press all season, and it's it's strange to get your head around. I think he doesn't want Mourinho to come in, um, and he definitely wants Ryan Giggs to succeed and, and be a manager at Manchester United somehow. So I think when the club was looking... Less at Ryan Giggs and more at Mourinho. He started coming out back in Van Gaal when it previously he hadn't been back in Van Gaal. And I think he's basically just trying to put pins in, in little slots all over the place that aren't Mourinho. Um, and Pochettino, well, he's quite rightly being talked about for the biggest jobs in world football. I mean, he did a great job with Southampton. Mm-hmm. He's proving it again with you guys. I think the only thing he's not done really is win a domestic title and compete in Europe at the highest level. Um, apart from that, he's, he's ticking every single box. He looks like an absolute winner. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd take him tomorrow if he was available. Well, I say that. I, I would like an interview process for the next manager. I don't, want, I don't like us just anointing people like we did with David Moyes. Yeah. I would like us to actually do some due diligence and find out who the best managers are and do they fit in with Manchester United. But he'd be one of the candidates I'd talk to. Would he be your number one now if you, if you were, the, if you were the, the chairman? Who would you go for? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think anybody's qualified for the job at Manchester United. I think the idea of us bringing in this Bertra guy from Atletico is a good idea because I think Sir Alex Ferguson took on more than just a manager's role. I think he was a director of football that picked the team. I think he was more than what we would consider managers are nowadays. Um, I don't know who the leading candidate is. There's no obvious candidate. It wasn't Pep. I don't think it's Giggs. I don't think it's Jose, who I think it is coming, to be honest. Um, I don't know who could do it. I think it needs to be a combination of maybe two or three people. 
Interesting. So uh, very, very interesting period of transition at Manchester United. But like you said, you know, with those young players coming through, if they can kind of uh, breed confidence and keep playing as well as they have <coughs> done, and obviously Marcus Rashford being the uh, the ultimate the ultimate ex example of that, then maybe you could have another great season next season, especially if you manage to uh, knock Man City out of those top four places. I think that would be hysterical. Although um, after last night's, uh, sorry, we're recording this on Thursday, but after last night's uh, City draw away at Paris Saint-Germain, it's getting worryingly close, like they could get to the Champions League final, like Chelsea did that year when they knocked us out of the Champions League places. A horrible thing to contemplate. Um, anyway, uh, so Sunday, four o'clock, the big one, Spurs Man United. Stephen, how's it going to go and end up with your prediction, please? I don't think it's a disaster if we don't pick a win up here, uh, which is a good thing because I'm not sure that we will pick a win up at Wyatt Lane. Um, we've got three remaining away games and if we win one, draw one and lose one and win our home games, I think we're finishing the top four. Um, and I think this is going to be the one that we draw. I can feel... Um, I think Spurs are going to come for us because that's how you play. Yeah. And that's when we've typically found success. We've really struggled against teams that refuse to play football against us and just yeah. sit in two banks of four. <clears throat> Excuse me. Spurs play football, so you're going to leave gaps. And when teams leave gaps, we, we actually look quite like quite a good football yeah. inside. So I think a, a score draw, one all, or two all, something along those lines. Right. Terrific. And just finally, where do you think Spurs are going to finish this season? Second, so a comfortable second. I think Leicester, I don't know what they've done this season, but I think they're going to finish several points ahead of you guys. Yeah. I think you'll be in comfortable second. I think them lot down the road are going to be in third. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to sneak fourth. All right, good man. Just, uh, I, I, I think you're probably right. I mean, I haven't really looked in this, into this this morning, but it, I was thinking it on my way in. I was just thinking, actually, when you look at Leicester, everyone keeps saying, oh, Leicester, they're going to lose to this team, they're going to lose to that team. The, the teams they've lost to this season are, I think, Arsenal twice and Liverpool once, and that's it. So, you know, with me thinking they've got Sunderland away, that's going to be a tough game at the weekend. Actually, when it comes to it, they haven't lost a game like that all season. So maybe it's time. Maybe it's time for us to just think it's not going to happen. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on, guys. Uh, if you like the sound of Stephen, if you have a penchant for Manchester United in any way, make sure you check out Full Time Devils on YouTube. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter, at Spurred on TV. And don't forget, follow the boys, uh, get behind them on Sunday. We need to beat these guys. Come on, you Spurs. This week, we'll be talking about the Liverpool performance and the result. <coughs> no worries, I'm down on Sunday anyway. Who knows? Uh, Kyle Walker's performance in particular against Liverpool, a game of two halves for Sorted. him. Uh, Son versus Lamella. Right, we've got that debate to bed now. 